Hello everyone, happy Thursday. Um, you guys are here live on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook and Instagram page with Brandy. My name is Brandy, I'm with Brushed by Brandy. Um, I'm a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador and I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening. It's Thursday. Um, every Thursday evening on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook and Instagram page. So we are live here tonight and we are going to work on a piece that we started last week. Um, you guys, my husband, Sean, is here. If you guys have any questions, pop on along the way. Ask any questions you've got um, about this piece we're working on or anything else you guys have questions on. Um, and, okay, so we started this piece last week. So last week we popped on, and I showed you this piece fresh out of my storage, all of the things we did to prep it. So my goal here is we're working on a piece together start to finish. And then these go up on my Instagram, or on my Facebook, oh my gosh, on my YouTube channel. These go up on my YouTube channel and you've got start to finish tutorials up on YouTube. So I already have several. We've done several of these start to finish pieces. So if you're just starting out painting, go to my YouTube channel under the playlist sections. You'll find start to finish pieces that we've done before together. A whole bunch of different looks. We've done decoupage pieces, um, pieces with patina paint. This time we're gonna do a piece with a little bit of a grungy finish and a transfer. So there's a blended finishes. There's a whole bunch of those under the playlists on my YouTube channel. And they're over the series of about, usually four episodes is what gets us through a piece. So we're on episode number two for this piece. Last week we pulled it out of my storage. We cleaned it together. It had a previous painted finish. Um, go to the Dixie Bell Facebook page. Go back to last Thursday and you'll find the um, first post for this piece and see all the prep work that we did to get here. And then I've got two coats of Dixie Belle Boss in white is what you see here. Um, so let me show you guys. I have a first coat on the sides. I'm going to show you guys the finish that we're going to do tonight. So just real quick, I do have a question on here. Yeah. Are we doing camo? Yes, yes. So what we're going to do... Actually, that was my question. Sorry to we're interject gonna, that. We're going to camouflage this piece <laughs> from looking like a trashy piece of furniture that somebody wanted to put in a burn pile. We're going to camouflage it to look like something desirable. Yes. It's really cool. Um, so this is the finish that we're going to do here tonight. And I'm hoping you, that we can catch some of the texture on camera. Um, if you can get in close, that would be awesome. But... Um, I'm going to show you guys, I took these gray paint colors and then um, we're going to use kind of a cross hatching pattern and a really dry brush to get this kind of grungy look where I've got all these gray paint colors kind of mixed in together. So this is the look we're going to go for. This is just my first coat on the sides here. Um, and I think we're going to do a second coat on this on the side tonight. Um, so you can see both paint coats that we're going to do. So, um, now that you've seen what our finish looks like, I'm going to turn this to the front and let me go through colors with you guys. I put this on my wheels tonight, which means I had to rob them from another piece. I need to get more wheels. Okay, so the paint colors that we're going to use tonight, let me pull them down and then I'm going to show them to you guys on the actual piece. Okay. So you notice it kind of goes from a dark to a light. It's not a perfect ombre finish. It's because it's very much kind of grungy with a lot of texture in it. But starting up here at the lightest color is my Dixie Belle Drop Cloth. And I chose Drop Cloth because it's not a pure white. So since this is kind of an aged worn look, I wanted kind of an aged worn white. And um, Drop Cloth is kind of this creamy white color. So we started with Drop Cloth and then I get into some French linen. And French linen, you can kind of see how they, it uh, coordinates with the drop cloth really nicely. My next color is Gravel Road. Gravel Road, when you thin Gravel Road out, it's actually a really warm gray. It's got nice brown undertones. So you can see how it goes with the um, French linen and the drop cloth. That's a really nice gradation there. And then I did use a little bit of Coffee Bean. Coffee Bean is a really dark brown color, um, the color of a coffee bean. So those are my colors up here. And I, I think this color combination is really awesome. It's nice and neutral, but still gives you a little pop of color um, with the grays. So the, it's drop cloth, French linen, gravel road, and coffee bean is what we're gonna work in. And then I did get out a little bit, I did get out fluff. And I might just hit it as a little highlight in some places that I just wanna highlight. So this is just gonna be a subtle little highlight color. I'll put that up there too. 
So a couple things, little housekeeping items. Number one, where do you get your wheels, your furniture dollies? Uh, my furniture dollies are in my Amazon shop. Um, you guys, if you go to the first post pinned to the top of my Facebook page at Brushed by Brandy, um, you, there's a link in there to my Amazon shop, and I have these wheels in my Amazon shop. And then, of course, we got uh, the questions about the fires, the smoke, oh, all that fun stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, I've gotten so many messages this week. You guys, Thank we you, are everyone. safe. We are in Northern California, just outside of Sacramento. Um, and we are safe. Nothing is burning close to us, but we have a lot of smoke. We're waking up every day, and there's no sign of the sun all day. It's just completely smoky outside. Um, so we've been kind of cooped up, staying in the house, um, using our air conditioner to kind of filter the air. I did come out and paint last night. It wasn't too bad, but we're safe. We're safe, and I'm grateful for that. I'm just sad for, um, you know, what's going on in our state. So thank you to everybody who's messaged. So let's go ahead and get started on our paint color. I'm going to go ahead and open these paint colors up. And the brush that I'm going to be using tonight is my Dixie Belle Mini, which is my favorite brush for laying paint on. I use the Mini probably more than anything. Um, you guys, they are in short supply on the website right now because of COVID. So if you guys follow my page, I am keeping an eye on it. And when they um, become available, I'll make a post on my page. The other thing you can do is you can sign yourself up for email updates when they become available. The problem is they're coming in really short supply and they're only available and they sell out really quick again. So that's just COVID. That's a good friend, COVID. Okay. And I showed you guys last week, the transfer that we're going to use on this is this soft pink transfer. It's going to be kind of grungy, vintage looking, but very feminine. So this is the um, Hardin de Roses transfer by Hocus Pocus is what I'm going to be using. So um, I won't pull this out of the tube, but there's what our transfer looks like. And then what I'm planning to do is take these flowers and vine them kind of down and around the piece, maybe a little bit up onto our wood stain top. And then probably a little bit onto the side here. So we're going to concentrate around this corner. So I want this to be darker. And the reason is because I want these light colors of the transfer to pop against the darker paint colors. So I'm going to get a little bit darker here. And then it's going to be a little bit lighter up in that corner. Very asymmetrical. Um, I don't want a, a direct ombre. I do have my mister bottle out, although I plan to use very, very little water. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do with this piece, hang on just one second. Is, just leave us? Yeah, bye, got to go. Is I want to put some would you bend on it. So what I'm planning with my would you bend, let me show you the, the would you bend. And here I thought we were... Going to have a crock pot yeah. meal. So you guys, when I'm heating would you bend, I have this crock pot. I picked it up at a thrift store and I throw my would you bend moldings in here. Like I'm going to throw this one back in so it doesn't cool down. And then I just let it sit for a few minutes. It's on high and I took the crock out of it. And I took the crock out because it gets hotter that way. Um, Is it, it really called the crock? Yeah, it's okay. a crock. It's a crock of wood you bend. I, no, no, no. I mean the pot that comes out of it is really called yeah, a crock. Yeah, it's really called a crock. Okay. Um, so, Knowledge. So I use this crock pot if I want to heat, like to clean hardware, I will use this. I don't cook my food in it. Don't worry, it didn't come out of my kitchen. It's specifically for my workspace. I just picked it up for like $5 at the thrift store, a crock pot that I can use in my workspace. Um, so what I plan to do with this would you bend is these are kind of little bows. These are available on the Dixie Bell website. And when you heat them, it gets really bendy. Can you guys see how bendy my bow is right there? And I want it to conform, you see that? To these sides right here, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply these really quick. And then I like to apply my would you bend before I paint and that way it has a seamless paint finish. And then if I want to add any gilding waxes or paint after the fact, it's still got that um, really seamless paint finish. So to attach Would You Bend, I use Titemon Quick and Thick Adhesive. That's the glue that I'm going to use. And then I've got out some painter's tape that's going to hold it in place. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put these on. Um, actually, let me ask you guys a quick question. I'm also on the fence about these. I have these other Would You Bend moldings here. And I'm debating putting them on these two drawers like this. So to do that, though, I'd have to cover up the keyholes. These are, it has real keyholes, but I don't have a key to them, so they're not ever going to be functional. Do I cover them up with the would you bend? 
So you guys vote on that one while I put these on right here. Okay, so I wanna pull these out of my crock pot. Now, they're really bendy when they're hot, but they will start to cool down. So you only have a few minutes to work with it before it starts cooling down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my pieces of tape off. You can choose to put, I've already got my uh, Dixie Bell Boss on here. You can choose to put your Would You Bend on under your boss or over top of your boss. You can paint them on their own and add them after the fact too. But I'm gonna go ahead and put these on before I put finish my paint finish on here. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this one out, super bendy. I'm gonna right away add my uh, Type On Quick and Thick. I don't want this to cool, but I can heat it with a heat gun on the piece. So I just want a thin layer of the quick and thick. I'm gonna to get to all the edges of my molding and then I'm gonna pop it right into place on my piece. And I want it down enough that it's not hidden by the top. And then it's nice and bendy right now. So I'm gonna conform it to this curvature. See how I've got, I mean, this is a pretty tight curve for this what was a flat molding, I'm now going to ask it to conform to this pretty tight curve. And Are you going to have I'm, a conversation with it? Or? Yeah, we're talking to each okay. other. I love you. You look beautiful. No, this doesn't make you look fat. And then I'm going to tape this down. I want to hold it in place. I feel like you're making fun of me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get my painter's tape nice and tight to hold this. So then as it cools, it's going to cool to the shape of my furniture piece. So I think a majority are cover the keyholes. Yeah, cover the keyholes, interesting. Okay. There are recommendations on where you can get dummy keys and whatnot, but for the most part, everybody's. Yeah, I could, I could. I don't think I'm that dedicated on this piece. I would leave that to a future owner if they wanted to, but you know, I think this is more of a decorative piece than one you wanna lock your valuables up in. Okay, so I've got a lot of tape on here. And I want that to sit nice and tight. I'm gonna give it one more piece. And I just pressed it all the way up against that curve. But I really like those these um, ribbons going down the side. And we'll pop this off in a few minutes after this has had a chance to cool and it's gonna hold that shape really nicely. Okay, let me turn this and we'll do the other side real quick. Um, you guys wanted to cover the keyholes, so you guys wanna put these on too? So for these, these are a little too large for my little baby crock pot here. So I'm just going to heat these with my heat gun. A hair dryer also works for this. Did you just kick my transfer? Oh, I did because I'm getting in. Okay, so this, feel bad this, sitting was back so far. this was rigid and just throwing that little bit of heat on it. You can see that it gets pretty wobbly. I, I need this to conform to the curvature of the front of this piece. So I got it nice and bendy. I could get a I could get a really nice bend out of this right now. But I just need a pretty small one. I'm gonna throw my glue on here. I put enough glue, I don't want it to squeeze out the sides and create a you know drippy mess on my furniture piece, but I want to have good contact. Try to make sure I get all the edges. If it squeezes out a little bit, I can come back and clean that up. And then I'm just going to cover that right on the keyhole. The keyhole tells me where the center is. It's still nice and bendy. And I'm just going to press that in. And again, I've got clamps out to hold these. These are those wide drawers where you have to open both sides at the same time. There we go. Okay, I've got a little bit of excess glue. I'm just going to clean that out. You can get a... a um, Paper towel, and if you've got extra glue, just clean that up. Can you grab me a, just any random brush out of there? I mean, I realize I'm not doing anything. I know. Here. I saw you just sitting there in your chair, relaxing, having a cocktail. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Wake up. <laughs> and then I'll just have the original keyholes will still be up the top here. Thank you. Sorry. I'll let you pick. Um, so what I'm going to use this brush for is I'm just going to brush away that excess glue. And then it just washes out really easily. I can just wash this brush out because it gets kind of in the crevices and I don't want to have, you know, gummed up glue. You know, this one, I didn't ask it to bend a whole lot. This was a bigger bend. Yeah, I didn't hear a lot of talking. Yeah, so I, I mean, it's seated on there really nicely. I can heat it on my piece. 
We are gonna paint tonight, you guys, but I'm gonna put these on really quick. I can heat it on my piece, and then if I just kind of squish it on there, it makes the molding nice and soft, and that just seats it perfectly into my piece, so I'll have no gaps whatsoever along the edges of this molding right here. So I just like to do that because it gives me just the cleanest, I mean, I think that looks like it belongs as part of this original piece. You wouldn't know that wasn't original. Um, this bottom drawer needs a repair. I showed you guys that last week. I have not done that yet. So it's a little... I don't think you're going to do it. It's a little bit um, missing the whole bottom. Yeah. But, you know, I'm pretty sure you're not doing it. I'm pretty sure I'm not doing it. <laughs> I know who is. I think that's, I think that's been solidified. <laughs> and the winner is... <laughs> Whoops. You do want to move kind of quick with these because once it's heated, I don't want it to cool too much. And I need to get my glue on here. You also want to make sure, you guys, that you don't burn yourself. And I'll show you guys in a minute what happens, what that looks like. I've got myself a permanent would you bend burn. What? Yeah, it's like it's like a tattoo, only only less expensive. Looks very conspicuous unless, from a doctor's unless point of view. You count, unless you count the burn cream. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to seat this right on here. I've got it going kind of right up to the top of my piece. So I'm looking at how this one's spaced here. I want them to be nice and even, and then I'm going to heat it on my piece. Oh, yeah, we could start another little... Uh, Shop called Branding Bur with <laughs> Burn by Burn Brandage. by Brandy. <laughs> Burn with Brandy. <laughs> it's no joke, you guys. That was an awful experience. I burned myself heating wood you bend. That's a little crooked, huh? You guys probably noticed that and you're calling me out on it right now. I always watch these back and I'm like, oh, that looked super crooked. See, that's why you go for the angled shot, yeah. not the straight on. <laughs> not the straight on. You guys can't even tell. Yeah. All right, let me come over and I'm going to do this last one. Um, you guys, if you remember last week, we had to do a repair right here with um, Dixie Mud and I sanded over the top and I've got a paint finish and you could not even tell that I've got that repair there. It looks really good. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my last little would you bend. It's nice and bendy, a little bit hot. Um, I put it on high and it takes, I don't know, it only takes a few minutes in the crock pot. Do you just wait for it to smoke before yeah, you? Yeah, until it starts <laughs> smelling it. like burnt hair, burnt wood in my workspace. Sean always thinks we're getting a nice uh, custom cooked crock, crock pot meal. Little yeah. does he know. It's always Speaking wooden. of little, what is that, like a spoonful? <laughs> All right, and then same thing over here. After I put my glue on, I'm going to bend this right around the curvature of this piece. It bends perfectly. I love these ribbons on here. That's a really cute molding. And then I'm going to tape it because see it wants to pop back. So I need to I need to let it cool in this shape and I should have torn some tape off before I did this. And I'm going to get it nice and tight. Clamps work good for this too. You can clamp it on. If you've got an angle that can be clamped, this isn't really a place I could put a clamp. I just throw a whole bunch of painter's tape on there. Nice and tight. As as taut as I can get it. So did you post a link as far as uh, Would You Bend? Uh, would You Bend is available through Dixie Bell. So if you go to the link that I have above in the post, um, you can find Would You Bend on there. Would You Bend is available. And you guys, it's all restocked right now. All, and go. <laughs> it's got new designs on there. I'm telling you, that's why you want to follow my page at Brush by Brandy because I tell you guys this stuff. Um, I just put a post up yesterday that it was nice and restocked. So um, they've got some new designs, some exclusive to Dixie Belle designs. So, so what I like about Quick and Thick is it sets up pretty quickly. You'll notice I put this on here. It's not going down the front of my drawer. I didn't tape it or anything. It's like and they knew what they were doing when they named it. Pretty quickly. Yeah, it's like it's quick and it's That's so weird. So I'm going to take this off and just check on it. If I need to, let me show you guys something. If I need to, I can take my heat gun while it's on the piece. Now that my glue has had a minute to set up, 
But if I see an area that's not as closely bonded as I want it to be, I can heat this on my piece. Not too much, I don't want to bubble my paint. So notice I'm moving my heat gun around. And then I can just, so that part, I want to make sure it's nice and seated. I mean, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. But I'm gonna put the tape back on here and let it cool again. Taped to the front of my piece. Okay, the one thing I will tell you about the quick and pick, you guys, you don't want to paint um, over quick and thick while it's still wet. It will um, keep your glue from drying and it can cause your wood you bend to detach from your piece. So like here, I'm gonna avoid these as we're, we're gonna come paint the front of this now and I'm just gonna avoid this area right now. Um, it's gonna take me two coats of paint. I can come back and do those. You guys be really careful. I promised you I'd show you my would you bend burn. Yikes. Yeah, do you see Let me that? Let get the divorce papers. I, I know, I'm stuck with that forever. <laughs> that, is a, that is a burn from my heat gun from doing would you bend. So just be careful uh -huh. when you're doing this stuff. I'm gonna unplug my heat gun and my crock pot. The crock pot stays hot, so be careful with that too. And I'm gonna move these out of the way because I don't care to add to my burn collection. I feel let down. I thought you were perfect, and now I see the imperfection. I know. I mean, I have to because I want to live amongst the people, you know? Oh, oh, is that what it is? Interesting. You got to relate. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. So now let's get in here and do some paint. Okay, so like I said, I want to start over here with kind of some of my darker colors. I think I've got three brushes here, but I think I'm going to end up using two brushes. And how I'm going to segregate them is I'm going to use one for my lighter colors, which I would consider the drop cloth and the um, French linen. And then this one I'll use for my gravel road and my coffee bean. I'm going to have contamination. I'm a contaminator. It doesn't bother me at all. It's so minimal, so minimal. It does not affect my paint at all. Um, See, Jason, we're here to help. He said, no, he's got a reason to use his crock pot. Yeah, yeah, I know. What, what else is the purpose for cooking meals? My kids hate huh? crock, pot, crock pot meals, by the way. Every oh. time I make one, they're like, come on, mom. Okay, so this is a really dry brush. And this is a pretty easy technique to get. I'm going to add a lot of texture in here. So I'm starting out with my gravel road. Sorry guys for the movement, just trying to get you in there. And I'm gonna use kind of a cross hatching and I'm gonna pull this paint every which direction. Okay, it's gonna take me two coats. So it's gonna be a little thin going over this um, white, the white of my boss for my first coat. I chose white boss because this is still a pretty light finish. I'm gonna let my gravel row get thinner in spots. Remember, I want, I want to kind of keep this shape is what I'm keeping in mind, that I want the dark to go up here and around. Just using the moisture from the paint and pulling at it. Gives me lots of texture. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Dolores said that her husband rented a skid steer and scraped the property. For what? But she, but she told him about the, or she saw the video posted about me and the uh, bees. Oh. Before him, so. <laughs> I was, I was wondering. I was like, oh what? man, I've done everything I can to eradicate those things from because the property. Of the fires. <laughs> yeah, we try to keep ours pretty clear, but not right now. Don't go mow your property yeah, no, no. if you haven't already done it. And I got traps okay, going. Okay, I'm gonna for... dip my other brush while my paint is still wet into my French linen. Really dry brush, and I'm forcing these colors to work into each other with lots of texture, you guys. Lots of texture in this. Lots of purposeful brush strokes. I'm gonna give Watch myself after. a little mist of water, uh, mister bottle. This? Okay, why'd you take it over there? It was way over here. Thought maybe you had two, like you came prepared. Okay, the mist of water is only, I'm, I don't want to get it wet. I just added like two little mists just because I want um, this thin layer of paint to keep moving. And I'm going to come back with a little bit of gravel road. Okay, 
I'm gonna try to cover some of these white spots just by adding a mist of water because it uh, kind of reactivates the paint to keep it in play. Okay, I like that drawer. Now I'm gonna come up here and same thing. Now my paint has dried a little bit and I just wanna keep it working. I'm not trying to make these blend smoothly. I want all these little brush strokes in here. I just need it to keep moving for me. That's all the water is doing. I'm gonna grab a little bit of coffee bean with my dark brush and I'm gonna add it over here in this corner. I'm kind of avoiding this too because I'm gonna to have to take the tape off of this would you bend. Yeah. On so, the inside edge. Yeah. You're gonna to wanna to catch Okay, it. so what I usually do is I will paint across the front and then when I come back, I'll pull the drawers out and that's when I do inside. But that tells me, okay, this edge right here is coffee bean. And this edge right here I should do in um, gravel road. So once I've done a paint finish across the front, I'll know what color lands in that spot and that's the color that I need to put inside the body right there. So I usually blend across my front and then I'll come back and make my frame match. Okay, I'm just gonna carry that coffee bean right up the leg I've got lots of scratchy brush strokes going through here. I can see those colors as they're kind of scratching together. And then I think this is okay. I'm just gonna pull the tape right on this edge. Um, you know what, I'm gonna cut it. Let me find my X-Acto knife. I've said this before, I need to paint my X-Acto knife. I can never find it. It's got a black handle on it. Of course. Here it is. I need to paint it like hot pink. I'm just gonna cut my tape so it stays taped, but I can paint this drawer without waiting. So I'm just gonna pull those little bits of tape off and now I can paint that at that edge and then I'll just have to touch up right here. But I know I wanna carry the dark up. And stay with me because we're gonna work across the front. My paint's a little bit dry right there. This is my coffee bean. Totally dry brush, very little water. See, for the camera, it's easy to see when you first start to apply the color, but when it starts to yeah. somewhat blend, then it's tough to catch the texture. So, yeah, call Sean, you call Sean, you guys on a cell phone. Huh? I'll give you the number. Go get a pen and tell him to get in here close. Because you do, you need to see the texture. It's got lots of brush strokes in it. That was a little bit of my um, French linen. What was that, 8675309? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Go ahead and add your own area code. <laughs> that doesn't age you at all. Okay, this is my French linen, and I'm just going to kind of alternate these colors because I don't, I don't want to keep this area solid French linen, so I'm going to take this now with a little bit of my gravel road. And I'm gonna scratch in some spots of that. See how I left these kind of bare spots and then I'll use that as a guide. Scratch that into my French linen. If I feel like I got it too heavy, come back with a lit, uh, with my French linen brush, which is that, we're gonna call it the light brush and the dark brush. Because eventually I'm gonna dip into my um, drop cloth as I get up into this area, it'll get lighter. And I just brush it out. <laughs> so I've got some nice dark spots right here. I've got this cross hatching texture going on. Um, just by alternating those colors a little bit. Now, do you always paint with the uh, drawers in? I usually, Obviously your hardware is not. I usually do. I usually do. And that's because, like I said, I want to get a consistent, like when I go from this drawer to this drawer, it's not going to be consistent if I take the drawers out. i got paint on my finger. Um, so I paint with them in and then I'll pull them out and I do touch up all around the frame inside. So that always gets done. It just doesn't get done in this step. But yes, I always paint around the frame, but you can't get a consistent finish by the drawers out. Now, 
if I do this and I feel like there's a spot I need to perfect, probably not with this look so much, but if I'm trying to get a clean blended finish and I feel like there's a spot I need to perfect, you can pull the drawers out once you've got an idea where your colors land. Cause then you know, it's got drop cloth right here and coffee bean down here. You know where the colors are gonna lie. Man, even colors lie. <laughs> you feel like you've been lied to. Man. Not just about the crock pot meal, but. Yep. Or the burn mark on your arm. Okay, I'm gonna dig my paint. My brush is pretty dry, so I'm not worried about um, my glue not drying. But I don't want to disrupt this too much because you guys know I just attached these. I'm just going to dig my paint in a little bit around here. This is going to take two coats. Any spots that I have that are bare, I will fix in my second coat. That was my gravel road. This is French linen. So I'm kind of alternating. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of drop cloth in here. Just for a little bit of light texture over the top and I'm just going to really work that in. So you can't really see it just gave me a really couple light spots over the top of that. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my drop cloth. I'm just barely putting the tips of my brush in the paint. This is a really dry brush. I don't have a lot of water on here and I'm every time I pick up paint I'm working that brush until it's until that paint is gone. <laughs> so it's kind of a dry brush technique. Wrong brush. I'm gonna come back. A little bit of the French linen. Remember, this is kind of where I want to start getting to my lighter colors. So it's gonna be very dark and grungy around this way, and it'll start getting lighter up in this area. Okay, so that was French linen. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of my drop cloth. Not too much yet. Drop cloth is really going to play a part up here. Not quite there yet. And then I'm going to give it, I want a little bit of gravel road. I just, I'm just going to use whatever's left in the brush just by adding water to my brush. Kind of reactivates that little tiny bit of paint that was left in my brush without picking up more. I'm going to do the same thing. French linen, just a little spot there. Okay, so I like this. I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit lighter as I move over. Okay, I'm gonna come up here. Let's work this top drawer a little more. Okay, so that's just a thin layer of the gravel road. And I'm going to put a little bit of French linen over the top. So I have that contrast is what gives you the, the texture in the paint by putting the lighter color over the darker color. When I take my drawers out, I'm also going to get up here under this edge. So don't mind that if it looks a little incomplete right now. Right now, I just want to get it across the front of my drawers. So really quick, as far as the wheels, they're posted where? Uh, if you go to the first post on my Facebook page, go to Brushed by Brandy, I've got a post that's pinned to the top of my Facebook page. That has all of my links, you guys. They're in my Amazon shop. They're in my Amazon shop. So I'm turning this as I go because I want to start working this side, but I'm going to carry my darker colors across the bottom. So I'm going to do that with a little bit of gravel road. I really like gravel road because you can thin it. You see how it almost looks brown against the white? That shows you what, what color undertones Gravel Road has. It has brown undertones. It's a warm gray versus a, you know, some grays can lean blue. Gravel Road is a warm gray. Okay, I'm gonna let it get a little dark coming up this edge right here. I'm going to do two coats exactly the same way. So when I turn this to the sides that I'll already have a coat on him, I don't know if I'll have time to do the sides tonight. I was hoping I would, but. But I'm gonna do two coats exactly like this. So that was a little bit of gravel road. I'm gonna come in with some coffee bean, which is a shade darker than gravel road. I'm gonna scratch in some coffee bean in there. I'm gonna come up here on this drawer a little bit with the coffee bean in the corner. 
And then I'm gonna work in a little bit of French linen. The French linen goes over the top just for a little bit of contrast. So I can see those brush strokes. It's a little lighter there than I think I wanted, but that's okay because I can just come back with my darker colors and darken it back up. And we continue this French linen. This is my darker brush here. I'm gonna get around this molding with my gravel road. I try to not spray these moldings while the glue is still wet because that keeps your glue from drying. So I am putting paint on them right now, but don't get them too wet while the glue's still drying. You'll regret it later, trust me. Don't ask me how I learned this stuff. Everything is the hard way. This is a uh, rough on your brushes too, you guys. Um, my minis are a little beat up. I just ordered some new ones. I'm really hard on my brushes. So what I'm gonna do to set these moldings off a little bit is I'll, once they're dry, I'll dry brush over the top and I'm gonna add some gilding waxes in there too. Let me fill in some of this bare area here. I'm gonna stretch my paint just by adding some water to it. it's such a thin layer of the French linen um, it still keeps the darker tone in these areas even though I'm using the lighter color whereas up here when I combine it with the drop cloth it's going to make French linen into a lighter version of itself so down here I'm brushing it into the darker colors it's going to take on a darker tone even so you can kind of make it go either way this is the gravel road and I'm going to give myself a nice thin, I honestly don't mind a little bit of that white peeking through either from my primer. So that's one thing I think about when I, when I use primer like a white, um, white boss like I used here or even slick stick, is it's a layer. You can use it to your advantage and make that a layer if you're doing a layered paint finish. So do you know how we're looking for brushes in stock right now? Brushes are out right now. They are out. I um, posted they were in for like five minutes. I'm not even kidding you. I put the post up and within like five minutes, uh, someone said, oh, they're sold out. That's how fast they're going right now. And sometimes it's not the mini that's in stock. Sometimes the flat will be in stock. Now the flat brushes I like just as much. It, they've got the same bristles on them, just a different type of handle. So if it's not an option right now um, and only the flat brushes are in stock, grab a flat brush. If you're looking to invest in a brush, um, you know, and then you guys, COVID's not going to last forever. Dixie Belle is working on getting brushes back to usual stock, but it is the way of the world right now. So all right, that was a little bit of coffee bean. Give myself a little bit of coffee bean down here. Anywhere I want really nice dark areas. All right, let's lighten this up. Let's get this corner nice and light. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my French linen and I'm gonna start working in the drop cloth. We have a few that are binge, <clears throat> excuse me, like to binge watch, kind of like we do, but catch you live. Oh. That it's three or four o'clock in the morning right now where they're at okay. so it's either i have to think what part of the world that is so uh christana you guys is another dixville brand ambassador she lives in germany we we catch each other a lot middle of the night my time is middle of the day her time so we catch each other a lot there where are you guys australia australia is another no one. that'd be go the opposite direction timeline so that was a so late... you're in the you're in the right ballpark though spain ireland oh, okay oh awesome <clears throat> Okay, so this is a little bit of my drop cloth and I, I, I mean, I think this is a pretty easy technique. If you're not comfortable with like perfect blends, you can get really cool textured looks totally with a dry brush, 
pretty messy brush strokes here. There's no precision to this finish. So it's really hard to get it wrong if you're intimidated by you know, those looks, then this is a really pretty paint finish that's a little, I don't know, a little less stressful. It's almost a little bit fun. So I'm working in a little bit of the drop cloth right now. It's gonna get heavier as I go to the top. I'm gonna get this little piece of molding right here. What size are those paint containers you're working with? I order the 16 ounces, you guys. Um, that's my favorite size to order is 16 ounce paint because I find it means I'm not storing. I, I love opening a new paint container. There's nothing like opening fresh paint. You know, opened paint, it does start to dry a little bit and it's just not the same. So I order the 16 ounces and I find it's enough that my paint is um, lasts just a lot enough for me to use it. And then when it's starting to show signs that I should not be using it anymore, it's about time to, you know, that I've emptied it. So. Those are the perfect sizes for my use. I rarely order, I, I don't order 18 ounces at all. And I think the 32s, the 32s are too big unless. Um, I mean, eight, o eight ounces. Oh yeah. What did I say? 18. Oh yeah. We're making new sizes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got like 18.2. <laughs> Sorry you guys. My brain is on the finish. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of alternating the French linen and the drop cloth right here. I'm, I'm going to lighten up this drawer a little bit right in this area. It got a little dark coming over. Um, 32 ounces are great if you have multiple pieces that you want to do in the same finish. I just alternate my finishes enough that I don't usually go through 32 ounces of paint very well. And then I'm just gonna give this a little bit of dark over the top just to kind of blend in so it doesn't have a definitive line where I just added some lighter color in there. Okay, I'm gonna come back with my, I'm just gonna do the tips of my brush in my gravel road and give myself a few kind of messy looking scratches through here but not enough to make it look darker. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of water to blur those out, really thin those streaks out a little bit. There, just a little bit. Because for the most part, I got no cloth, what did I do with cloth? You see a container of white paint, it's about yay big. <laughs> Oh yeah, you moved that too. I didn't move it. You, I didn't put it over there. Oh my gosh. This is my cocktail. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need a cocktail after this. Oh, keep moving, that's the truth. Paint, keep moving my paint like that. <clears throat> so this is my drop cloth. It's picking up some of the texture in the dresser too, which I like, you know, where it's got some bumps and flaws and anything like that. These are such thin layers of paint that it starts picking up some of the texture in my furniture too. And I'll stand back after I'm done with this tonight. And like I said, this is going to take two coats. So if I feel like I need to move any of these paint transitions, I can do that in my second coat too. I'm going to get this top corner with a little bit of fluff, which is a pure white. I guess it's not super pure. Just the tips of my bristles are going into that white. I'm gonna use the water to thin it out, almost like a like a color wash over the top of this texture. And then you can still see the texture through it, but it just lightens it up a little bit. I'm gonna go a little bit over here. I'm gonna lighten this up area up a little bit, and I think I'm gonna have to do that in my next coat. Kind of this back and forth. Give 
myself a little bit of water so I can get some thinned out um, French linen in here. Lighten this up down here a little bit too. So I can still see the texture through the paint, just the water just kind of turns it into a, more of a color wash. And then this is my dark brush. I'm just gonna feather that in. I kind of like some of these streaks right here, like that one. Over in this corner, I want to keep it pretty dark. So you can kind of see where I'm going, and then when I've got that nice light transfer, it'll kind of vine around. Let's work this corner a little bit more. It's a little thin on coverage. It's my French linen. a little bit of drop cloth okay let's do this area down here let's let French linen up the corner right here and that's because I've got the coffee bean so it's gonna get you know slightly lighter but not all the way to the drop cloth All I'm using the water for is just to extend my paint a little bit. Because these are such thin strokes of it that the paint wants to dry pretty quickly. The water just forces it to. This is a little Buddy bit wants of my to know fluff. If your arm's getting tired yet. Oh, yeah, this is a workout for my arm, you guys. This is my painting arm. This one's. This is the one that's got the guns on it, and the other one's all. Bleh, bleh, bleh. I'm not the only one, right? And the other thing I'm really proud of is I've got a mean painting callus right here where I hold my brushes. Have you guys earned your painting calluses yet? I wear those with pride, like my Would You Bend Burn. I know, they have destroyed my modeling career. So disappointing. Mostly disappointing for Sean. He's still required to take me out in public sometimes. I'm not going to come. <laughs> yeah, not so often now. COVID's his best friend. This is a little bit of that fluff. I'm just kind of dry brushing it over the top. So dry brushing is a technique of just using a really dry brush and very little paint. So all I did, I mean, you're not even going to be able to tell that I tipped the bristles in here. And I can even take it and lay the, some of that paint off. And just dry brush a little bit of that over the top. Very little paint. Okay, and then I'm going to sit back and look at this here. And I kind of like it. I still feel like I need to carry the lights over a little bit more here. So I'll perfect that transition in my next coat. And then um, we're going to lay the transfer on. So let me talk to you guys a minute about the transfer. We're going to do that next week. Um, different transfers do better on different surfaces. So the Hocus Pocus transfers, you guys, do better over a top coat. So we're going to put the clear coat on before we put this transfer on. We'll go ahead and do that next week. Next week, we're going to put some clear coat on this. We're going to put the transfer on. And if we have time, we'll do a little bit of wax and glazing around these, these details. So we're getting close to where once I finish this paint finish with two coats, I can kind of wrap this, uh, wrap this piece up with you guys. So what do you guys think? Can you see some of this texture that we've got in here? This is a really nice spot. Does this show on camera? Well, if you leave here, scoot it backward. No, 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 don't. Why don't you get in there? Yeah, because the light. Give the people what they want. This is a good spot but right here. But I'm on here. this side of the camera. Texture, uh, this is a good spot for the in the darker area. But I've got some good texture. So even though I'm going to repeat this for a second coat, I'm, I, I'm going to keep the same technique so I don't lose that texture. And I've got it on the sides as well. And of course, I need to get up here under this lip. We might have two more weeks of working on this because I want to do the top with you guys too. We're going to do a wood stain on this top. 
So what do you guys think? It's kind of a worn, grungy gray. We put a little bit of black wax on here, some brown wax to uh, really look like it's kind of old and, and dirty and dingy, but then it's going to have that really feminine, pretty transfer on it. So it's going to be that kind of um, juxtaposition of the pretty feminine versus old and used and dark and dingy. It's a little bit like me. Yeah? No comment again? Oh, I'm sorry. Were you yeah. talking? Did you say something? Yeah. I value my sleep. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Do you guys feel like that's a paint finish you can do? I think it's pretty easy. It's pretty hard to mess up. It's a back and forth with the colors with a really dry brush. I end up using two brushes tonight. Let me go back through the colors again. I'm sure there's people asking what colors, always the colors. Um, we end up using five colors on this one. Five, I usually land at five. I like three color blends, but I usually land at about five colors on a piece. So our darkest color was um, Coffee Bean, Gravel Road, French Linen, Drop Cloth, and Fluff. Look at them all together. They're perfect. I love that color combination. Our Would You Bend looks great. We put some Would You Bend on tonight. Um, all right, you guys, I'm going to pop off and we will be back. And next week, we're going to do the next step on this piece. So we're going to keep working on it together until we have a completed finish that you guys feel comfortable that you could duplicate at home. Um, and then, like I said, these go up on my YouTube channel. And under the playlist, I've got start to finish pieces that we've done together in the past. All right. So you guys go give me a follow up brush by Brandy if you don't already. Um, you guys, I put a link in the top of this post. That is my affiliate link. If you want to order um, any of the products that we use tonight from Dixie Belle, either the Would You Bend or these five paint colors, um, you can order through that link above. You can also use that link to find a retailer in your area, someone who stocks and sells the paint. If you want to go in and see it and feel it and talk to somebody, you can find a retailer in your area. Um, all right, you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe. If you're close to the fires, which is anybody on the West Coast, you guys be safe. I'm sorry for anybody who's evacuated right now. Um, we're thinking about you guys. So um, have a great weekend and uh, we will catch you next Thursday. Bye.